Joining us now is Democratic Congressman from Pennsylvania and ranking member of the Budget Committee, Brendan Boyle. Uh, Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. What are Democrats doing right now as Republicans in the House seem to be tying themselves up in knots? Well, it's good to be with you, and I think it's important just to set the stage for this to keep in mind that over the last 30 years, every single government shutdown that has taken place has taken place when Republicans are in charge of the House of Representatives. No government shutdowns have taken place in 30 years when Democrats were in charge. So unfortunately, this is something that we've gotten a little bit used to. Heck, the last government shutdown in 2018 was under a Republican House, Republican Senate, and Republican White House. We have members right now on the Republican side who are publicly saying they want a government shutdown. So I continue to fight against it, to rail against it, you just showed the real life consequences, some of them, of what happens with the government shutdown. The last one that I referenced earlier, there were 140,000 job losses as a result of that Republican shutdown. We can prevent another one if we just have enough moderate or independent Republicans who are willing to band with Democrats uh, and end this nonsense once and for all. So we have a couple of Republicans who said they'd be interested in it. They're willing to consider a discharge pe petition. That's Mark Molinaro and Mike Lawler, both of them from New York, both, um, you know, in a blue state, frontline Republicans. Have you heard whispers of anyone, of anyone else? Well, I have good news for them. Uh, I'm actually the author of the discharge petition. And right now it is still sitting in the well of the floor. They can go to the well anytime the House is in session. Every single House Democrat has signed that discharge petition. I originally filed it back some months ago regarding the debt ceiling, but it is still live and active and can be used on any issue, including this one. We just need half a dozen or so House Republicans to join with us, and then we would be able to discharge a bill uh, to ensure that the government uh, remains funded. I realize that um, you know debt ceiling, or excuse me, discharge petitions rarely work, but I have seen them work before. Uh, once in my previous nine years, uh, this gambit has worked. It worked again in the previous decade. So if this works about once a decade, I would say this is uh, we're, we're about due for one to work. Um, what about Kevin McCarthy? Uh, it doesn't behoove anybody for Congress to be in chaos. I've heard Democrats say that. I've heard leading Democrats say that. Does that mean that you would potentially, as a Democrat, be on board with saving McCarthy's speakership. I know he's not a part of your party, um, but I don't know. You tell me. I mean, we heard this morning from, from one congressman who said that there is talk among leadership about this. What have you heard? Well, I will say this. I mean, ever since that embarrassing first week back in January, when it took Kevin McCarthy 15 different rounds of voting just to get his own side to elect him speaker, uh, I did fear that he would be so beholden to the most extreme MAGA members of his caucus and willing to bend over backwards to please them that it might mean that inevitably we would reach this point. I would also point out, though, the one time he stood up to them was in June when we ultimately did raise the debt ceiling. That bill, 80% um, of House Democrats voted for it. Two-thirds of House Republicans voted for it. So. If Kevin McCarthy would just have the backbone to stand up to Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Donald Trump uh, chirping in from the outside, I think he would see actually there's a pretty large bipartisan consensus when it comes to this issue. So are you saying that if he were to stand up to them and come up with a compromise that Democrats would be on board with keeping him in power? Uh, actually, no, that wasn't what I was saying. Uh, I said the Democrats... Uh, showed in June that we're willing to vote for bipartisan legislation, and we would do so again no, in order that, to keep the government feet, but, but funded. Part of, but part if of what's tying it, his hands, I understand that. Part of what, tie, what is yeah. tying his hands is that if he does that, there's the motion to vacate. I mean, obviously, that the negotiation to bring it down to just one person probably wasn't a great idea, but that's how he got the gavel. Um, in order to reach a compromise, and the compromise he reached for the debt ceiling, it put him in this position where his hardliners are saying, we want you out, Matt, Matt Gates being one of them. In order to say to Matt Gates, I don't, you know, I don't care, I'm going to do this anyway, I'm going to do the right thing, does that mean he's got to get some Democrats on board with keeping him there? And if so, are there concessions that he can make to you, to Democrats, to make it more palatable? Well, there are a couple things uh, there. First, I mean, I, I do think if he actually stood up to his hardliners, I think he'd be a, a little pleasantly surprised to find 
uh, a lot of support even uh, within his own ranks, number one, and it wouldn't necessarily come to a, a motion to vacate uh, vote or needing Democratic votes. But toward your hypothetical, if it came to Democratic votes, I would have a very difficult time ever voting for Kevin McCarthy uh, for speaker, given some of the really extreme stuff that I've seen uh, over the tenure of his leadership. That said, though, at, at this point, I certainly wouldn't rule out anything. Um, <clears throat> But we are, you know, a number of hypotheticals down the line yeah. when it comes to this question. The impeachment inquiry, I'm sure, did not help. Um <laughs>